hello listeners and watchers of the SDR Disco Call podcast or maybe slash vidcast. I'm kind of figuring out the name as we go along. Uh, but today we have a show that I've been waiting for for so long. And in previous episodes, I always spoke about this concept of a dynamic duo. And uh, I was honored to meet two great people from the world of sales and development earlier this year. Um, and funny enough, one of them recommended the other to come on the show. And then I kind of said, what about the other guy? Could we get him on the show and could we do this together? And it's finally happened and I'm so freaking excited. Uh, but rather than me going on and on and on, as I normally do, I'd love to introduce our guests. So Vivek and Amadash, welcome to the SDR Disco Call podcast. How are you doing today, gents? Oh, we're doing good. Uh, happy to be here. Happy to spread the happy selling hashtag throughout the world. <laughs> Love it. And Vivek, how are you doing, sir? Doing super amazing. Uh, super stoked to be here. Um, thanks so much for having us. And it's, it's good to see that, you know, we're going to give out insights with a team orientation. So I'm super excited. Absolutely love it. So could you just let the uh, listeners and watchers out there like know who are you? Uh, where are you from in the world and currently like what you're doing and where are you at? If we could start with Vivek. Um, it's Vivek here, as we all know. Uh, and I am currently based in a small little island in the Pacific in uh, British Columbia in Canada on the West Coast. And currently, I'm a product specialist, aka SDR slash BDR at an Australian HR tech company uh, called Intelli HR. Thank you so much. And Amitesh. Hey, guys, this is Amitesh here. Uh, uh, I'm working at Bookchain, and it's a Toronto-based tech firm. So Bookchain is like an all, all-in-one workforce scheduling platform that enables healthcare facilities to fill shifts, schedule and communicate with their internal and external agencies. Love it. Thank you so much for the introduction. And again, where are you based in the world, Amitash, just for the listeners? Toronto. Uh, I'm in Toronto, Canada. Perfect. So we've got two gents from the world of Canada today. So thank you so much for waking up uh, to, to record <laughs> with myself today. I really do appreciate that. Um, and it's kind of been like a cool story as to how you both were connected in the world of sales development and SaaS and startups. Um, and the thing is, when we last connected, you weren't working at the current companies and positions that you were. Um, you were originally at Vidyard, and that's kind of how we got connected. And we shared a lot of comments and likes on LinkedIn. And I thought, you know what, I really like these two. And to your point, Amadesh, you're like a Batman and Robin dynamic duo. I don't know who the Batman is, and I don't know who the Robin is. But just for the listeners out there, like um, Vivek, can you kind of like just give us a little short bit of like kind of like originally where you've come from and like how you got to Vidyard, and then I'd love to come back to Amitesh with the same side as well. For sure. Um, so I'll try to cover uh, seven to eight years in 30 seconds. Um, <laughs> so I, I'm originally an engineer and uh, a lot of uh, people around me call me Yvick. And the reason is because I ask a lot of questions. And during my engineering, I started asking, like, you know, how are we going to monetize these machines? And that was sort of my tipping point uh, into sales and uh, started off my career uh, with a sales job at a Honda car dealership, where I dove into all of the basic concepts of sales. And throughout my journey, uh, went into startups, uh, you know, went the hard way, uh, moved to Canada. Uh, learned that uh, the tech community is super amazing in, in Victoria and Vancouver both and sort of got thrown into it and uh, <laughs> quickly learned that there's this uh, course or a boot camp called Uvaro, which mm. is actually training uh, people on sales development, especially in, in the SaaS context and got super intrigued, took that, you know, went all out on LinkedIn, met wonderful people like yourself, Neil and Amitesh. And that's that's where we came across Vidyard as well. And uh, we come, came across this wonderful uh, internship opportunity where and we had been started using Vidyard. So we were sort of sold with the tool and mm. uh, we were super excited, uh, you know, to be interning at Vidyard and eventually land into this role. <laughs> Love it. That's a cool story and greatly wrapped up in a short space of time. Like, that's a lot of experience. So if I get it right, um, like obviously, you were called Yvec because you were constantly asking questions. Uh, started sales like with Honda sales, um, was looking to kind of get into the startup scene. Um, and then in 2019, like you figured out that sales is so much more than what you were doing at Honda. 
Uh, then you went over to Canada. Um, you were working with, I think, in Victoria, tech comms. You realized it wasn't really for you, but then you came across Vidyard through the internship that he's doing and training in terms of SDR and sales development. Uh, and then, yeah, you kind of got to where you are today. Is that right, Vivek? Absolutely. Almost, I would say. <laughs> correct me. Please correct me. Did I miss anything out there? Not really. I mean, that, there's a lot of uh, variables there in between. But uh, I mean, you know, on a high level, yes, that's, that's the story. All right. Thank you so much. And Amitesh, coming over to you, like, what's your story of like how you got to like Vidyard and where you are? Oh, man. Uh, I think I think 40% of the story is probably the similar to Vivek, uh, <laughs> you know, after uh, getting into the URO Tech Sales Bootcamp. Uh, but, you know, before that, I was back home in India. Uh, I was a founder of my own company for a good five to six years. And my two greatest loves uh, in life, you know, professionally are uh, A was tech and B is interior design. Mm. So I kind of was a founder at an interior design firm where I used to get like projects and I was I was responsible for my own like revenue generation. So a lot of sales and business development was kind of my, my job at my company. Uh, and then cut to, you know, uh, moving to Canada last year uh, because of the pandemic, everything had to be, you know, I had to shut shop. Yeah. Uh, essentially, uh, like a five, six year old business, I had to shut shop. And uh, that was sad. But then life, life goes on and uh, moved to Canada, got into the tech sales boot camp, uh, got the opportunity to, you know, uh, you know, to get like a lot of really great instructors and like learned a lot there and then kind of, you know, landed the internship program at Vityard uh, where Vivek and I met uh, and it's been it's been one hell of a journey till now. <laughs> Absolutely love that. So I'm like, so again, coming from India, like running your own business and again with a lot of us, including myself, like COVID did impact and it kind of like had to make us, you know, evaluate, reiterate ourselves, reinvent ourselves as well. Um, and I remember that you saying like you were a lover of tech as well. And this is something you did with your father in terms of business, helping them scale with <laughs> tools and techniques. Um, oh, yeah. And then, you know, everything happens for a reason. And it took you on a journey to Canada where you went in that boot camp. You met your kind of your co-partner as well uh, and working in the world of like video, which, again, everybody knows I'm a huge fan of. And that's kind of like where we've been conversing a hell of a lot on LinkedIn. Um, yep. But I think, again, so this is a, a free-for-all conversation. By all means, jump in over each other or talk, like, how you see it fit. But, okay. I'm, again, as a dynamic duo, like, kind of what we what was like it, like, meeting each other at that boot camp, then going into Vidyard, and, like, how were you guys working together? Because, like, you had some successes, and you had some certain ways of working together to help each other out. I'd love for you both to, you know, walk us through how that relationship and journey was built out. Uh Okay, so like uh, we met each other at the tech sales boot camp. Uh, kind of, you know, we were just a high and buy kind of sort of a situation there. But then I got on, into the internship program, say one month before Vivek, and when he joined in, uh, it was chemistry on the go. Uh, we actually used to uh, have like team meetings almost uh, almost on Mondays and Fridays. Mm. Uh, but then we kind of, you know thought it was more important for us and our growth to have like a coffee chat almost on a daily basis. And I think, I think that is what kind of, you know, led this camaraderie to, you know, where it is today, where even, even like, even if we are at different, different companies now, we still share a lot of ideas. We have each other on Slack, on WhatsApp. We, we kind of, you know, uh, have our internal jokes and we keep on cracking them. <laughs> and it's been, it's been fun till now. Yeah. I'm sure you love that. And, and Vivek, from your side? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty interesting how, uh, even in the virtual world, you can still have that same in-person kind of a connection if, uh, if you put in some effort. Um, so kudos to Amitesh, uh, when, when I joined Vidya, um, it, it was my first job, uh, you know, in a remote mm. role. And I, I didn't really know uh, how to go about things. And, you know, I, I'm, as I said, I'm curious. I started asking questions. And Amitesh was fortunately willing to help sort of uh, started interacting uh, almost on a daily basis, as Amitesh mentioned. And uh, what we realized is that, especially in the virtual environment, you know, we are all sitting in our rooms, you know, working from mm. home. Um, it's it's super important to have 
that personal connection to transition into a professional one because until unless you don't develop that how are you going to collaborate ask questions and learn from each other and contribute eventually to your own growth and your organization's growth so i think uh, it's it's super important to have that and once you're comfortable working with your own colleagues you sort of develop that trust and once you develop that trust then boom <laughs> it's it's teamwork and you you're never looking back yeah absolutely love that and th- that's the thing like um in a few saas companies that i've worked with especially like when it becomes from onboarding and when you're like taking on new hires i think it's really cool like having a buddy system you know that buddy that you can ask those millions of questions um and also like ask advice of how do we prospect how do we talk to personas how do we send out emails like how do we book those meetings because you know that's how some of us get paid as well um and a lot of the time i've seen it on both sides of the fence so sometimes it's just like neil this is your buddy you can reach out to them whenever you want and sometimes i found that person isn't as warm or they don't seem as available and sometimes i'm worried to actually bug them i feel like that i'm bugging them and then on the other side of the fence i've had somebody who's been very proactive so they would check in with me every day or like email me at the end of the day or slack me and say so neil how was your day was there any concerns are there any questions um or sometimes in other places you have a buddy at the beginning of onboarding and they're the person to meet with you at the end of each week to certify your knowledge and like what have you learned and what questions have come out and then kind of when you get into month 3 they kind of like taper off they'll always be your good best friend like helping you out at start up but they kind of like take on the next person that comes for a buddy but in your opinion gents because you've been kind of in essence like a buddy system what's the best way to like help buddies out and kind of what best practices would you suggest to like you know fostering that relationship for a new hire uh the way you would want to take the lead yes that's <laughs> sure um so i think uh, the key aspect to uh, you know realizing that is that you're always on day one no matter wherever you are how much ever you learn sales or in general i think any any space is something especially tech it's it's so dynamic it's it's on the go everything's changing by the day by the week so to have that sort of mindset that you know i know everything is mm. is a myth so i think w- when you're always on day one you you tend to be curious uh, you tend to ask questions and even though if if say for example we're learning some tool when when we're working and uh, there will be a point i can give you in 100% you will be stuck mm-hmm. somewhere so at at that point you will realize oh okay i don't know everything <laughs> and that's that's when you you know rewind and then ask then then you realize okay i am in his shoes as well mm-hmm. or her shoes as well so it's it's that's that point where you realize okay you don't know everything and it's okay if someone asks me stupid questions as well because i have been in that point yeah. at some point so that's that's something it's it's very simple and uh, and you sort of uh, develop you know the that mindset to answer questions mm-hmm. whatever they might be and is it's a one time thing and you know once you go from there you you're never looking back as i mentioned amit issue feel free to add there so basically uh, like my two cents on it is like having having like you know a human connect is always important and and you know the basics of any human connect is you know showing a little bit of vulner- vulnerability yeah. and that's where you know i kind of you know gel with vivek uh, and you know it happened like in like it like in an instant cuz you know we were just talking and it was kind of his first day and i still remember it uh and he asked me a lot of questions and i was like wow this guy is really curious and and i and i i too you know by the end of the end of the week uh, i i realized that he's almost learned everything that i i took like two weeks to learn mm. uh, and and like full full credit to him and probably you know the buddy system we kind of you know started building on that his onboarding was like uh for me it took two weeks for him it took four days so nice. it's it's almost imp- it's always important to kind of you know have that kind of you know situation where you can b- bounce off ideas ask silly questions and like there aren't any silly questions but it's only it's always an opportunity even if you know i didn't realize something at a given point he asked a, a question and and it got me also thinking hey this is a, this is also important and that's how you know you kind of grow 
flow through that situation and it and it's important i absolutely love that jins if we could just like document that and just give that as like the <laughs> blueprint so like future SaaS companies like this is this is how you build a buddy system because i think a lot of people just say okay yeah you're my buddy just ask me anything that you want but having that sort of structure and i i agree with you like having that empathetic feel towards that new hire that person's coming through like i've been in that person's shoes i know what it feels like to be the lost guy or girl in, in a new company um and i love that also as amadash because those questions that you get asked are being asked from a fresh perspective and sometimes we i always like to have like a childlike manner that i'm always curious and i'm always trying to see everything for the first time but when you do a day-to-day -day job and you're doing it monotonously over and over and over again, you kind of lose that essence. So by having that buddy ask those questions, it makes you, like you say, think about it yourself as, mm, do you know what? I never really thought of that. And yeah, that's a good point. That's a good question. And same way, like uh, yeah. I used to say, like uh, I would say to my new hires, like there is no such thing as a stupid question. It's only stupid if you don't ask and you sit there silent because if you try to answer something where you haven't learned about it, and you're on the call with a prospect, they're going to smell BS and they're going to know that you're BSing. So don't be afraid to ask. And I think it's uh, it's daunting for a lot of new people because they don't want to seem like an idiot. You know, they don't want to be asking a dumb question. But again, I don't think it's dumb. Um, and we definitely learn from others. So I was like reading a quote. Uh, I've been kind of getting into stoicism uh, the last couple of days. But Socrates said that smart people learn from everything and from everything and everyone average people learn from their experiences and stupid people have already have all the answers right and i think that's yeah, good yeah. yeah and i think it's a case of like you know learning um from each other and that's kind of like why I, this is again why i'm doing the podcast because i don't have all the answers and i want to meet people that have gone through different experiences they've learned from each other and they help me learn as well and we put this is again why we're putting it out to the listeners uh, and and watchers out there um, but like yeah. during your time through Vidyard and I think, you know, being in that remote world, like for video, like what was cool? Like what, because we've had a guest from Vidyard and um, we had Courtney Christie, but that was quite a while ago. What was it like working as interns for this, you know, video startup? What was that like for you both? For, for like me, uh, like coming, coming from a sort of a introvert here, uh, Video was something I was not comfortable with, uh, you know, initially. And it even then, you know, I, I like I was at a stage in life where, you know, I came to the conclusion that, you know, do whatever is making you uncomfortable today. Mm. Do, do, do it. And, and it took, I remember like the first one minute video that I had to make, it took me two days to make it. And it wasn't easy to see myself uh, on camera and like, uh, over analyzing different things. Oh, is my hair all right? Oh, am I looking <laughs> fine? Oh, what did I say? Or, oh, I'm fumbling too much. Oh, I'm saying a lot of ums and ahs. And uh, that was something that, you know, that uh, that was challenging for me uh, initially. And then, you know, I kind of got used to uh, using video and probably seeing myself. And uh, uh, it's, it's, it's been one hell of a journey because Vidyard kind of, you know, uh, pushed me into a corner where, wherein, you know, I had no other option but to fight back mm -hmm. and fight back we did. And thanks to Vivek and uh, thanks to all the people at Vityard, they were, they were a huge support during that process. And even, you know, uh, you know, the manager I wanted to like shout, give a shout out to is Spencer yeah. who worked with us at URO. Uh, he kind of, you know, uh, gave a lot of good feedback and, you know, throughout the process. And then, you know, Vivek was always on a back end, back end call because uh, his support was also important for me. I love that. That's, that is cool. And shouts out to Spencer as well. Um, <laughs> I think like, like you say, getting in front of a video and a camera, this is something I've got used to over the years and I love doing it now, you know, but initially I was always scared doing it. And the idea of video prospecting is something, a seed that I try to plant into any training client I go into or, you know, SDRs or BDRs that I'm giving advice. And admittedly, some of them are like, were like you, Amitesh, were like, I don't like doing this. This is really uncomfortable. And I think the first point is to do things to outside of your comfort zone. That's where the growth happens. And that's where you can realize your potential. You just got to take that first step. And I kind of like equate it to a gym 
the hardest thing about gym and fitness is not so much about the gym or the reps, it's walking through that front door. That's yeah. the hardest bit of working out and training. Um, but it's once you've walked through the door, you'll then most likely go to the weights or, you know, whatever machines and it's a walk in the park. Yeah. And then you walk out of the gym door with a smile on face. Oh, do you know what? That wasn't that bad. I'm glad I did that workout today. And that's kind of like the, the, the narrative that I give to SDLs. But the other piece that I remind them of is majority of SDLs or BDLs that I'm talking to, I'm like, what is it that you want to continue doing after being an SDR? And synonymously, a lot of the time it's, they want to become account executives, right? They want to sell the product. So my question to them is, so how are you going to be selling this to your prospects? And they're like, you know, doing meetings, like showing them a demo. I said, okay, what, on a camera? They're like, yeah. And I said, you're going to have to speak and look into the camera and like see people's reactions, right? They're like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then maybe one day, like in uh, uh, when COVID's like all figured out and everything, you're going to have to go meet them face to face, right? They're like, yeah. And you're going to actually having to be talking to an audience, right? <laughs> I said, what's more, more nerve wracking, getting in front of a camera to send a video to a prospect or, you know, being in a demo or a meeting, they're like being in a demo or a meeting. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. So my advice to them is like, get comfortable with this because one day you're going to have to do this face to face in reality. And here's a good, you know, training ground to like get all the mess ups, the F ups that we have. Um, yeah. and there's nothing wrong. And I think in comparison to email, like email is just text. It's just words. There's no tonality to it people buy from people. So the, you know, the vibe that you're putting out on that camera is a great opportunity, you know? So I digress, I digress, but Vivek for you, like <laughs> your world, uh, and then coming into Vidyard, like what was that experience like for you? Um, so it's, it's pretty interesting how, uh, I mean, same as Amitesh, it was a massive challenge for me. So traditionally I've, I've been sort of a traditional person where salesperson where, you know, I've been always hammered with the idea, you've got to meet your customers, you know, in person to conduct sales, to conduct negotiations. And I'm like, you know, when COVID struck, like we're salespeople, how are we going to go about this? And the only solution mm -hmm. I saw was video. And I've, I've been sort of anti-social, <laughs> anti-selfie sort of a guy. And I, that was a massive roadblock, same as Amitesh. I, I, the first video was like 40, 45 retakes reading the script like a robot and you know i was telling myself you know this is not happening but again when when you don't have a choice what do you do as you said you you have to go out there keep practicing you know with video everyone as, as amitesh again said like everyone was so supportive and mm. it's, it's just like cold calls right like you will never get there with 10 20 you got to make those 100 yeah. 200 500 cold calls to get comfortable so i think it's the same with video um, keep at it and uh, no one wants to see a Netflix show mm. when you're sending an email. Just be yourself. You know, your, your background doesn't need to be yeah. perfect or your hair doesn't need to be the best. You just got to be yourself, um, you know, in the same tone and, uh, you know, just go at it and just deliver value with an impactful message. And I think that's about it. I mean, there's nothing more to it. And <laughs> apart from that, digressing again, um, <laughs> With, with Vidyard, uh, the team was solid, um, as uh, Amitesh mentioned, Spencer. Um, there are all of these wonderful people at Vidyard. It's a very big team, and everyone was very kind enough to uh, give us time, even even though we are interns. Uh, you know, and we, they were open to chatting. You know, give, uh, giving, sharing their experiences, and sort of uh, that was a learning point for us. And and that right now, like you know, all of us use video so proactively. So I think. Kudos to everyone I love it. who's helped. And also, that's kind of evolved for you as well, Vivek, in terms of video. And we'll come on to that piece in a moment. But coming back to this Batman and Robin dynamic <laughs> duo. So as we've seen with great partnerships with be it superheroes or things that we've learned in stories or like watching other leaders in other companies or teams working together, there is also the element where Batman may have a strategy, but Robin disagrees because he doesn't feel that it's the right way. Or perhaps Robin, you know, he kind of wants to go solo and do his own thing. And Batman's looking like, dude, you've still got like, a lot to learn. Like, we're a team. And sometimes teamwork does have its conflicts and it also has like moments of friction. Um, so I just wanted to know, like, were there any moments of friction, like with ideas and thoughts? And how did you guys mediate that? And also, you know, have that professional side of it, but you also have that friendship side of it. How do you keep that stuff in sync, guys? 
I mean, full transparency with you, Neil. Uh, we had we had tips almost every day. Uh, we had we had different opinions on on how how to make coffee, like uh, the smallest topic, like how to make coffee. Mm. We like we had different opinions on that, and that's 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 beautiful if you kind of you know understand because there are two people. Two people are going to have like different set of you know expectations experiences you know and what they want to say and how they want to say it and it's always important because you because two conflicting uh, you know opinions are uh, have to it's like it's like one line's coming from air and one line's coming uh, there has to be a intersection right mm. and that's the sweet spot that we that we kind of you know worked at and that kind of you know gave us a lot of success uh, at the internship as well love it vivek from your sort of point of view so it's it's pretty interesting how there's an overlap uh, with respect to everything like everything builds up upon everything now what i mean to say is when we spoke about you know the buddy system being friends you know establishing that trust a conflict doesn't really remain a conflict it sort of becomes two fresh ideas where we are having a discussion about not really an argument or a conflict and that's when you start appreciating okay you know what you try that mm -hmm. i try this so you were sort of indulging in ab testing and then coming back with results and seeing what is working what is not so instead of doing that ab testing on your own spread it out in your team you know let everyone give their 100% towards their own ideas and actions and come back with those results and again as a team why not use that and exploit it so with respect to that i mean amitesh and i and and i, I think another point uh, to add is like so in order to avoid those conflicts to build up just have a regular mm. you know like a once in a week check in sort of a thing where like you know i think you know you're not doing that well it's like why do you think so you know i have this just come with a reason give an idea and see and just let them know yeah. that that is working and we we'll appreciate it why not in yeah. an ideal world yes it's, it's and it does, it does happen and I, I love the way that um, your dynamic works with each other and being honest and you know saying that sometimes yeah we do have tiffs we argue about certain topics um and i think debate is something very healthy especially in a relationship be it you know with your partner or with your teammate um, and being able to voice your opinions without the fear of, you know, being hit, shot down or completely ignored. And that's not always easy, like, you know, office environment. So sometimes it can be equally even more challenging on a remote environment because you can't be with that person like face to face and see their expressions or think, OK, once they shut the Zoom, how did they exactly react to that? Are they effing and blinding about me, etc.? But I think having that safe space, like you say, um, Vivek, to like have that one-to-one -to, -one to say like, hey, dude, what's up? Things aren't cool, but also come with ideas and active listening, the same way we have with prospects, being there to listen to the other person's point of view. And I think a thing I had to do when maturing through my sales career is I always thought my way was the only way it's going to work, you know? Like, people would come to me with these ideas. I'm like, nah, da -da, da, I'm not just going to do Like, you, you crack on, do what you want to do. Uh, I don't really care. But I started realizing that, you know what, sometimes being vulnerable was the best way that I got trust with somebody else. So, for example, Vivek and Amitesh, I really want to try out this idea, but I don't think it's going to work. What do you think? And they would then give their honest opinion. I would listen to it. I would take the feedback, and I'm always looking to improve. And then equally, what I'd find is people would then come back to me saying, Neil, I've got, I know this isn't in your world, but I've got this idea and I'd love to get your thought on it. And that's how I got the ping pong sort of effect with having constant conversations with people um, and then having that trust of I could tell them and say, I think that's shit. I don't think that's going to work. I really don't. And this is why I don't think it is. But I'm interested to see what result you get out of it, you know, and if it's really good yeah. then share it and then I'm open to trying it as well. Um, yeah, like uh, another good thing, you know, out of this is like if you if you love growth, you need some some sort of friction. Growth can never happen without friction. Mm -hmm. There has to be friction, learning experiences throughout, and that's where you know this buddy system kind of you know works. And 
you need fresh ideas you need to bounce ideas on someone and like kind of see what the end results are and yeah without friction there's no growth yeah 100% agree 100% agree it's not a comfortable ride but i'd rather be a little bit uncomfortable than just being completely comfortable and complacent um yep. and yeah like <laughs> i've butted heads many times with many people and i think it's a good thing because it's helped me personally grow uh, and it's helped me take out of my comfort zone uh, but i think equally there are people lot watchers and listeners out there that are always worried to make that comment or to give that feedback and that could be the thing that's holding them back so sometimes it's picking the right time when to have that conversation as well. So for example, if a deal went completely south and everything crashed, maybe at that point in time, it's not great to, you know, say, I think you kind of fucked up and I think that wasn't the way you should have done it. Um, but maybe picking another time when things are kind of settled a little bit and then saying to that person like, hey, it'd be great to catch up in a couple of days just to pick this back up. And I think that could be another way that yeah. you can circumvent the initial blow up that could happen or that we're fearing. Um, but but for, for both of you as well, like you've taken this internship route um, and that's a great way to get into SaaS companies and something I advocate more and I'm seeing more prevalent uh, with a lot of startups as well. But you have both since obviously moved on from Vidyard and you're now into the next phases of your career. Like, could you just walk us through like what was going on, like what made the move, kind of what you're doing and kind of what you're going through at the moment? Um, Amitash, if we could start off with you. Okay, so... Right now, I'm still, you know, with the onboarding process, but then, you know, and, and this is essentially still like a startup company. And I was, uh, and I am the, like the first sales hire after the VP of sales. So it's just me and him. And we have like a lot of uh, discussions about, you know, how he, how the training has to go and what, what's important and what the product's like. And then, you know, I take it upon myself to kind of, you know, uh, meet with like the Q&A people or the back-end developers or or even this customer success side of the teams and we have like used like I've had like yesterday I had like six hours of zoom calls and I didn't wow. get tired because, because there were so many so many good people and I have like I'm always enthusiastic to you know kind of meet new people now and uh, and kind of you know take take charge of like what my job and my role is at the, the sooner the better for the company mm. and kind of you know finding more efficient ways of doing what the processes are going to be like as of now uh but then you know four days in uh no complaints <laughs> <laughs> i love that i love that and you know what i'm going through a similar thing as well i've recently taken on like an sdr manager position and yeah, that's what I've been doing. I think this meeting, I've had over 20 meetings this week. Uh, I'm getting a little bit of Zoom fatigue, uh, but meeting people, seeing their processes, meeting like the product, the engineering, I'm like not the first salesperson on, on the floor, um, but I'm one of the first SDR managers that's done this for a while. And I've got some experience of process and stuff. And I think the thing that I'm finding really hard, Amitesh and Vivek, is I know how things should be and how it could be, and I'm really tempted to try and implement and put these changes is now. But the way that I'm stopping myself is every new meeting that I'm going into, I'm just saying, hey, look, I've been in SaaS for about 11 years. I know how a lot of things work in other companies, but I'd rather observe how you guys work and what your processes are, what are the dynamics. And if I can spot any small tweaks or bits of advice, I'm happy to give it, but I'm really having to hold back. But um, going through that phase of new is something really cool. How how did you come across the opportunity, Amitesh? Like how, how did you find these guys? Uh, actually, I was looking at different other jobs and kind of, you know, healthcare was kind of outside my realm of understanding at that point. Mm. Uh, but then, you know, I kind of, you know, like deep down in my heart, you know, like the world is has gone through a major shift and due to COVID and the pandemic and especially the situation back home in India, mm. like the healthcare system has just failed yeah. uh, of sorts. Uh, but, you know, it's just like a very emotional aspect of me kind of, you know, thought of getting into healthcare and kind of, you know, making these uh, uh, to be with the product that's kind of, you know, helping these healthcare workers out. Mm. Uh, and that's where, you know, my decision kind of, you know, I went towards book chain and the whole process was pretty smooth and simple. I had two interviews uh, uh, 
both with the VP of sales and he kind of liked me and we kind of, you know, uh, had a little banter call afterwards that he's, he called me up, uh, I think after, uh, just before I got the offer, he called me up and he said like, unfortunately, you know, we've had to say no to all the other guys and we, we've decided to give this offer to you. And I was like, dude, that, you are. <laughs> I skipped a beat there so, and I kind of, you know, uh, uh, when I, and I had like other companies that I was, you know, kind of interviewing with yeah. uh, throughout the process. And, you know, when I signed the contract, I sent it over to the HR and I called up uh, the VP of sales and I was like, hey, uh, hey, Joseph, uh, uh, unfortunately, I had to say no to all the other companies. And I decided. <laughs> so, so <laughs> it was a good fun uh, exercise on my, on my bit. But then, you know, uh, I love the company. I love, uh, you know, my my VP of sales and uh, it's, it's, it's good because uh, he's been there, done that. And I have a lot of uh, opportunity to grow and, and, it, and especially, you know, if you were working with a product that's that you're emotionally kind of involved with, yeah. you kind of in that extra, like, I know you, I'm going to give my hundred percent, but then if you're emotionally invested, you kind of give your 200% and mm. that's where, you know, my understanding is right now. I absolutely love it. So that's a cool journey and shouts out to that VP. That was a, a very sneaky thing to do, but I love the way that you played him at his own game. And I agree with you. I think I, I got asked this question um, by an SDR manager, as which was like, does your SDR have to believe in the product or are they okay with just product and being able to sell it? Like what makes them great? And I said, the one that really has, to your point, an emotional attachment to that business or that vision and mission they're going to be giving you way over the odds of 100% uh, into that role because they fully believe in it. And But on the other side of the coin is, yeah, somebody could just pick up a product, they learn how to use it, and yes, they could definitely sell it, but they're not going to be as in heart as the other person. And I said to the person, does that answer your question? They're like, yeah, it does, it does. So I agree with you, that, and I'm with So Vivek, for yeah. you, like, what was the, the transformation and what was the journey into the new world? Well, um, it's, it's sort of an interesting one. Um, so I, I realize, like, and I think it's, it's, it's good for everyone to realize that it's as difficult it is for an organization to mm -hmm. find the right people as it is for a job seeker to find the right organization. So I think that that moment of acceptance, you know, suddenly changes your behavior, your outlook towards your job search. And in general, you know, towards your your career. And uh, after that, I, I started realizing, like, for me, what is important? So I sort of thrive in uh, small teams, you know. So usually what we consider when you're looking for a job is, you know, what is the comp? You know, what's the product like? And, I mean, they are definitely important. But mm -hmm. you're going to be spending eight hours a day, five days a week with these people. So for me, um, the team was really important, um, uh, the team size, the, the team members, and obviously the person uh, you're directly going to work with. So that was one of the key aspects which I was considering. And obviously with respect to the product, um, I, I've been in the startup world since a while now. And uh, every aspect of a business sort of, as Amitesh mentioned, contributes mm. to an impact indirectly or directly to humanity or, or to anything in general. Um, so. And as we all know, growing out of the comfort zone only leads you to better situations. And I was uh, new to the HR space. I mean, I didn't know what HR was. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as much like, you know, for us, it was just what we know, it's recruiting, you know, all of that stuff. And But uh, I, I signed up and, you know, that was sort of an uncomfortable moment for me. Like, you know, I don't know the space. Like with Vidyard, like we had got pretty familiar with MarTech and, you know, advertising in general and uh, thought, okay, let's take the leap. I, I might not be as passionate, but let's see how that goes. And after having been two weeks into it, it's <laughs> I've been amazed how HR is so important <laughs> in an organization because, because I mean, we, we are at that place where we've seen attrition, the reasons of attrition, you know, why someone would want to leave the organization, why someone would want to join the organization. And when we, you know, take five steps behind, we realize 
HR is is the main reason why the you know sort of one of the main reasons why an organization thrives. And and suddenly two weeks into it, I see myself super passionate, like you know. And as I say this, so so it's it's pretty mm. interesting how all of those dynamics change as well, just like how the tech landscape changes. So it's it's really important to understand that some things what you might not have liked in the past you might loving it in the future or in the present so it's it's pretty interesting uh, how how that journey has developed having said that at intelli hr so it's as i mentioned earlier it's an australian hr tech company and they recently set up shop in north america and the uk and i'm sort of the first hire as mm. an sdr on the west coast so it's it's sort of that uh, scrappy feeling again where uh, you know i have to learn things on the go uh, as amitesh mentioned like you just have to have those zoom meetings yeah. in place uh, you might be fatigued a little bit you know that initial bit might be difficult but super important to have that initial connection with, with your immediate team members a and then with the other mm. people who are actually contributing towards like say you know the software developer he never gets to interact with anyone come on just hit him up man talk to him for 10 minutes or 15 minutes you know what's wrong with that so um, i think that's really important and uh, it it has sort of uh, cascades into your interests and your outlook towards things and i'm i'm almost two weeks in i'm super grateful to be here and i i feel that i've made the nicest no, so and of, you're, you're uh, very right hr is and, very and important it's more than just it. sickness or a grievance or something like that they're the people that help uh, like put this keep this company together but what's really cool for like the both of you is you're both so like for yourself amitash like in terms of healthcare you're like you wanted to help people and if you think of it from your side hr is to support people so you're kind of going into realms of like helping people and is people based and it's people centric which is really cool and both of you being like that first person on the ground in that position you're going to be helping this company build out their processes with the experiences that you've taken on and i think that's a freaking cool place to be and it can be a bit scary at times when you're that first person on the ground uh, and you've got these vps or these marketers saying like so yeah how should we prospect how should we reach out to people like how are we going to find the post owners and you'll sit there and think aha <laughs> it's kind of like leaving <laughs> like uh, i don't know like going back to university or going back to education with a mind of now that's the way i've always perceived it but yeah. interestingly like you say i've just hearing you both it made me reflect of like the different startups that i've been in um so like when i was working at showpad i was learning how to sell to sales and marketing and we were speaking to a lot of vps cmos C cro's and we was learning of how do they you know run a business because we were training sales teams through our solution then i went into the world of cybersecurity again had no developer knowledge didn't understand code or anything like that and realized that with developers most of the people that i'd met or worked with were very introverted as well so that was a different one so how do we sell as an extroverted person sell to an introverted person how do we have those discussions and equally like how do i keep my mac safe how to make sure i don't get hacked because i've got a lot of sensitive data on my laptop um and then when i went to intro i learned okay from a hate we did a hr solution um uh, we was helping hr we was helping with employee engagement so how do you run a one to one how do you do a performance review how do you like provide motivation for your team and recognize them for their achievements um and they're now coming to happio again it's again in the world of hr and employee engagement and experience but it's more from a social aspect so they provide a platform similar to like facebook for work of how do you uh create communications from the bottom up so a lot of companies have top down communication where ceo say stuff it gets filtered to the water cooler people don't get the hell but how do you give that power to the employee and the reason why i've gone into all these different industries is not just to say yeah i've worked in loads of startups and i know what the hell i'm doing is because i want to know how to ha handle all these elements in my own company because one day i envision that i will have a company that will need a hr department that will need a cyber security that will need a way to boost employee engagement and morale so i'm going into it to learn of what can i learn from this industry and that's another way to look at it because i think with some sdrs they may get caught up of wanting to stay in the same industry or stay with a similar product set because they're comfortable with it but you learn so much more to your points and again congratulations to both going into a world that you're not familiar with but you're very open to learning and i think that's a beautiful thing um 
And to come on before we come towards the end of the show, I did say I would come back to it. Vivek, there was something I saw coming off the back of you in terms of video. Uh, and I wanted to give a little bit of props because like you've come onto my show today. You've helped arrange this meeting together as a Jew. So again, I'm going to open the floor a little bit. What's lockdown TV, dude? <laughs> so that again, uh, is, is an outcome of uh, being open to learn. Um, uh, I, I have to give a shout out. So Jacob from video, I was having a chat with him and uh, I sort of told him like, you know, I deliver a lot of value in one-on-one -on -one conversations, which I have, uh, you know, with my LinkedIn connections. And so he's like, what is stopping you from, you know, posting it to your entire audience? Mm. Mm. I'm like, but you know, again, that friction, I'm a little skeptical about that. I've never done that. Why should I do it? He's like, take the leap, try it. I mean, it, do, it does make sense that if I'm having those one-on-ones so effectively, why can't I deliver to the entire audience? <laughs> Made that first episode <laughs> before clicking the post button. I was thinking like I took 10 minutes. I still remember to click that post button. <laughs> but I think that was the best. I mean, Amitesh also supported me at that point. Like, you know, do it. And uh, I, I posted it and got lots of love and, uh, that that's been I, I'm I'm never stopping now because it's it's something which I'm enjoying. Mm -hmm. I I've been uh, you know that's how I met you, Neil, as well. Like you know we've been following a lot of people on LinkedIn. I sort of found like you know some of us get ten have a tendency to get too serious about things, and I thought you know let's deliver, try to add some value mm -hmm. from the ground from in, STRs in a funny to STRs, way, right? and we're all in lockdown, <laughs> so let's call it lockdown too. <laughs> so that was the simple idea. <laughs> From SVS, uh, yeah, and uh, it, it, yeah, I never stopped there, and uh, you know, I'm, I've been giving out my ideas uh, from my heart there, and uh, mm. I've been making mistakes. Sometimes, you know, some episodes I'm not myself. You know, my mood is affecting me, but that's okay. We're all human, and it's, it's bound to happen. We're not here to make that perfect Netflix show, as I mentioned earlier, where you know everyone has to see the production or my audio quality. So I think uh, it's it's been a wonderful experience, and I'm I'm really liking the fact that uh, uh, everyone's not only enjoying it, like the, the humor aspect of it, but also uh, absorbing value because uh, it's not coming from some pro expert who's been in the industry for like forty five years. Um, it's just I'm the simple same SDR where you know mm. thousands of us are here. And just giving out those insights, what's worked for me, what's not. It might not work for you. It might. Um, we're all here to experiment. So, you know, just trying. Uh, I've mentioned in one of the posts. Um, so definitely for the listeners and watchers, if you guys want to check out Lockdown TV um, with Vivek, I'll put a link uh, in the show notes for from this episode. So go definitely check it out. Subscribe, like it. That'd be super cool. Um, and as we're now coming towards the end of the show, gents, and it's been the best show that I've had so far as a dynamic Jew, so thank you so much for that. Um, coming to you, Amitesh, first, like, what would be the three bits of advice that you would give to a younger Amitesh who, you know, a couple of years ago, he was just about to, like, leave India and think about, like, joining startups and tech and SaaS? What three bits of advice would you give to him? Uh, I think first and foremost, like, don't be afraid, man. Just don't be afraid of, don't, just don't get overwhelmed by the situation, by the newness, almost of everything. Be comfortable in uncomfortable situations. That's like the first tip uh, that I would like to give because that's where your growth lies, man. And that's where I think that's what stops almost everyone from like reaching their true success, their personal success in life. Mm. Uh, Second up is, uh, you know, find a company that fuels your passion. Like how I say that, you know, I'm emotionally invested in a company. Find a company where the work does not seem like work. It's all fun from there on. Mm. Uh, and, and, you know, last up, uh, you know, don't be afraid to, you know, show a little bit of vulnerability because that's where, like, the human connect lies. Uh, yeah, so that's my three top hot takes on, like, what I would tell my younger self. Absolutely love it, Amitesh. Thank you so much. And would you like to give any shout outs on today's show to, to anybody out there? Uh, big shout out to uh, Lockdown TV, though, uh, since I was the first uh, guest on Lockdown TV. So big shout out to Lockdown TV and Vivek for that. Uh, other than that, you know, uh, a huge, huge uh, shout out to, you know, uh, my, my wife, uh, you know, who's been 
my constant you know support throughout these uh, you know i've I'm, i've been married happily for like five six years now uh she's been you know like she's seen the highs she's seen the lows and she's been there throughout but you know professionally uh it's like huge thumbs up to you neil uh, you've been a great support throughout you know your podcast is something that kind of you know i i remember the first podcast uh, i shared with vivek i think it was your podcast i think it was the one with the uh, uh, one you did with uh, courtney mm-hmm. uh, at pitiart yeah so i keep listening to your podcast and uh, you know and you know i i and i can't you know i have like eternal gratitude towards the uro family the place where we did our tech sales boot camp uh, i don't want to name names because everyone has been instrumental in you know where i am today dude that is a heartfelt shout out shout out to the missus as well because having that partner like go through with that all the as well all the people there and to lock down TV and to, to, to your cop partner in crime I'm still trying to figure out who's Batman and who's Robin but that's absolutely beautiful both of us are Batman both of you are the Batman all right I'll be your Robin for today how about that <laughs> uh, you can you can be the superman cuz you know it's happy selling also. oh thank you so much dude I really Oops. appreciate it thank you and uh coming to you Vivek so like if you were to record like um you know a lockdown TV episode where you're going to like send this to the past version of yourself what three top tips would come into that episode uh, too many top tips but uh number 1 uh, make more mistakes i think as a as a younger self uh, i mean i've made enough but i just feel i should have made some more um because uh, as you grow older you sort of stabilize with your mindset mm. so try to make those mistakes as early as possible because nothing like failing fast and learning fast so i think that's number one um second is a uh, little oriented towards sales um i think it's it's super important to understand that before we join any organization as mm-hmm. sales people we are our own sales people all our friends our families our loved ones they are all prospects we ha- we they will have them long term if we deliver value at every point in life so i think having that sort of a mindset is because of something like that's that's the reason we are all here right now we've all added value in each other's lives we have seen value and and that's why we are here so i think uh, that's that's number 2 um number 3 just be yourself mm. it's the most i think it's the simplest basic tip i can give to anyone you don't have to pretend you don't have to you know change for anyone i mean you you might uh you know grow into something that's fair but you don't have to change for anyone so i mean i have i i don't care people yeah. have a lot of different comments over for example my hair um i don't care yeah. it's okay i like it i enjoy it i feel comfortable so i think it's it's super important uh, yeah. to have that mindset i think uh, vivek and gets his uh, yeah, super powers from his uh, luscious yeah. <laughs> yeah. hair <Yeah. laughs> those locks those beautiful locks dude no, i love it but I, i agree with you and i like um I I've, I've always said this to Tim like, I don't really care what people think of me uh like everybody has their perceptions the only people that I care of you know what people they think of me like my close friends and family the people that I respect and the people that I love because not everybody's going to like me not everybody's going to like what I say but that's their problem and not mine and I'm always up for a debate I'm always up for a discussion but my job is not to please others it's to make sure that I'm happy within myself so I can 100% relate to that and I'd love to have your locks uh, Vivek I'd love to have long hair like that I've always tried it I always get to a certain point and then I'm like nah just cut it off look there but gentlemen uh, both to both batmans uh, from your robin here it's been an absolute blast having you both on the show and I wish you both the best success and a happy selling in these new ventures and definitely we need to get this dynamic duo back on a future show to see how things have gone since from today um but for the listeners and watchers again thank you for joining us on this dynamic duo episode first ever super exciting 
Um, make sure I'll put the links to both Amitesh and Vivek so that you can find them on LinkedIn if you want to reach out and ask them any questions. I'll put the links to the lockdown TV as well. Um, and by all means, if you're listening to this episode through your local podcast provider, please give us a rating and some feedback and equally share out this episode with your network because we're trying to help as many sales development people out there understand this world of sales development, fall in love with it and share best practices because it's all about happy selling. But uh, Amit, uh, Amitesh and Vivek, thank you so much. And I wish you both happy selling. Thank you so much, Neil. Have a great day. And uh, we're looking forward to, you know, what what this episode does Thank to so the much, sales Neil. community, to uh, to future SDRs. You're like, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's good to be part of, you know, uh, a journey uh, like happy selling. And we're proud. Thank you so much. Neil. Just a short message from my end. Everyone listening or watching to this episode, um, big, big shout out to Neil because uh, he's been a solid inspiration in uh, doing things out of our comfort zone. Like when he proposed this idea of being on a podcast and both Amitesh and I were like struck back, like, you know, can we do this? So we have again with this episode or in general coming on a podcast have come out of a comfort zone. Absolutely. You guys are uh, the best. So I freaking love you both. Thank you so much. Everyone. That's so <laughs> much sales love right there. Don't want to be afraid. But Amitesh and Vivek, Please. an absolute pleasure for having you on the SDR Disco Core podcast. We will definitely see you back for a future episode. And for the listeners and watchers out there, thank you so much and happy selling.